We're live. Okay, sergeants, can we please start the backup at this time? DC recording is underway. Our recording is up. Backup is rolling. Thank you, gentlemen. Hello and welcome to today's stated meeting. At this time, I'd like for everybody to please turn on their video so we can identify you. Please turn all electronic devices to vibrate. Please turn all electronic devices to vibrate. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of April 29th, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you'd like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Ayala. Barron. Less than present. Borelli. Present. Rannan. Present. Brooks Powers. Back. Present. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cornegy. Mm -hmm. Dharma Diaz. Present. Ruben Diaz. Present. Dinowitz. Present. Drum. Present. Eugene. Felice. Gennaro. Here. Gibson. Good afternoon, I'm here. Jonai. Present. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Present. Lander. Here. Levin. Yep. Levine. I'm here, thank you. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Present. Perkins. I, I start, I hop right here, thank you. Thank you. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Riley. Good afternoon, present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Malone. Here. Van Bramer. 
Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you so much. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Rashad Moore, spiritual leader of the First Baptist Church of Crown Heights, located at 450 Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn, New York. Welcome. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. Let us pause for a moment of prayer. Eternal God, we pause for a moment out of the daily rounds of life and leadership to give you thanks for the gift of life and for life itself. For just a few moments, we wish to pause just long enough just to hush out the noise of life's demands, endless Zooms and emails, calls and conferences, just to thank you for the simple gifts of life. You have allowed us this awesome privilege to serve you by serving the people of this city. You have given us the opportunity of a lifetime to lead and to serve the greatest city in the world. So we ask now for your presence in this meeting. All that we need, you have provided. And so we ask for your spirit to prop us up on every leaning side. We lift before you, O oh God, our city and its 20 million citizens. Encourage us when we are disappointed. Strengthen us when we grow weak. Give us courage to speak truth. Give us the imagination to dream new dreams and to see new visions. Give us, O oh God, a sensitive heart to hear the cries of those who are sick, destitute, and in need of the basic things of life. Help us to realize that we have more power than we realize. All that we need, you have already provided. Now it is time for us to do the right thing. Bless us with your power. Empower us to be steadfast, honest, and true in all that we do. This is our prayer in your many names. Amen and Ashe. Amen. Thank you so very much. It's an honor to welcome you here today. The Reverend Rashad Raymond Moore is the senior pastor at the First Baptist Church of Crown Heights in Brooklyn, New York. Many of you might know First Baptist because you are aware of the leadership of Reverend Clarence Norman Sr., who served for over 60 years, as well as the service uh, after him, that was the church was led by the very great Reverend Daryl Bloodsaw. And now we are so very proud to welcome Reverend Moore uh, to the chambers here in city council. Reverend Moore holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in philosophy from Morehouse College and a Master of Divinity from Union Theological Seminary in the city of New York. We are so proud to welcome here hey. today because our Harlem- Just wanna uh, give you a heads up on the- um... Uh, Barry, Barry, you have Barry. to mute yourself. Reverend Moore previously served as assistant minister at the Abyssinian Baptist Church. Among his many clerical and civic duties, Reverend Moore currently serves as the UNCF New York's Faith-Based Initiative Council, Sheltering Arms Children and Family Services, and the Morehouse Manhattan Alumni Association. So he is also my Morehouse brother. Currently, Reverend Moore is completing a PhD in philosophy and education at Teachers College, Columbia University. He is a rising star. He has continued to lead his congregation during these very challenging times during the COVID-19 pandemic. He has opened up his church in order to be a vaccine site where hundreds of people in the Crown Heights community and beyond have come for assistance, service and support, but mostly for a life-saving vaccine that has helped and aided so many of us get this city back and started again. The church has also been a site for a food pantry, delivering food, goods, services, products to the people in the Crown Heights community and beyond. So we thank you, Reverend Moore, for your leadership. And I promise you, Reverend Moore is a rising star that everyone should continue to look out for. And I'm sure when the church opens back up, he will welcome you for a service at First Baptist Church. So thank you so much. And with that, I make a motion that we spread the invocation onto the record. Madam thank Majority you. Leader. Yes. Council Member Barron also wishes to be recognized to make some comments about Reverend Moore. Oh, wonderful. We will now recognize Council Member Barron who also wishes to share um, in celebrating our very great Reverend Moore. 
Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just briefly want to say my husband and I had an opportunity to hear a sermon that you delivered recently at your church. We were greatly inspired and we just wanted to add our congratulations to your installment as the pastor. And we know we're going to see great things coming from that church and for the community under your leadership. Welcome. Thank you for your love. Thank you so not much. We will now have the adoption of minutes by council member Justin Brennan. Thank you, Majority Leader. I want to make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of March 25th, 2021 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much. We will now have messages and papers from the mayor. M300 through M307, various budget documents. <clears throat> Finance. M308, city debt and reserves. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M309 and 310, environmental control board appointments. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to our stated meeting today. Happy Thursday. Today we are voting on bills to help workers plan for their retirement, expand our groundbreaking right to council law, create more open space for New Yorkers, and several other important measures. I'm very proud of these bills, and I thank all of you for your hard work in getting us here. Before I delve into our legislative agenda, first, I would like to bring an update in our battle against COVID-19 in New York City. <clears throat> As of yesterday, 32,461 New Yorkers have died from the coronavirus. I say this a lot, but I think it bears repeating. These are mothers, fathers, sisters, uncles, cousins, friends, and coworkers. It is a daunting number, 32,641 New Yorkers. But every single one of them was a human being, and we must never forget that. I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge some of the important losses in our city in addition to COVID losses, including those city workers who died on the job. Early Tuesday morning, a 14-year veteran police officer was killed while at the scene of a crash. The tragic killing of NYPD officer Anastasio Sacos is a reminder that reckless driving costs lives. My thoughts and prayers are with his wife and two small children, a three-year-old and a six-year-old, his loved ones and the entire NYPD. He was only 43 years old. We lost another police officer who died yesterday by suicide. He was the second officer to die by suicide this month. The officer whose name has not been released yet was 34 years old. On March 29th, we lost Francisco Vialva Vitiano, uh, who was killed when he was making deliveries in Manhattan. He was fatally shot after a gunman demanded the delivery worker's electric bike, he was 29 years old. His tragic death is a reminder of the danger delivery workers face every single day. We also recently lost Lisbeth Mass. Lisbeth was a flagger at a construction site in the Bronx. She was fatally shot while working on April 14th. She was 52 years old. Let us pause for a moment of silence for Officer Sacos, for Francisco, for Lisbeth, and for everyone else that we have lost. Thank you. Today, I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge staff members who are leaving the council and thank them for their service to this body. Salim Mizrahi, uh, my deputy chief of staff, is departing the council. Salim brought amazing insight and dedication to my office and to the council during an unprecedented time. She started just about the same time the pandemic was bearing down on our city and throughout the world. Salim was a huge part of us navigating some of the toughest moments that we faced, and I'm really grateful for her service to the city. She's a great wonderful, compassionate, smart, hardworking, empathetic person. She's someone I've known for almost 20 years. I admire her so much. 
And I'm just really grateful to, for everything she's done over the past year. So uh, we're sad to see you go, Celine, but we're very happy for you and for your family. Kalima Johnson is also leaving the council family. Kalima has been a senior policy analyst on the Education and Asian Committees since joining the council in 2016. She was instrumental in creating the culturally responsive education pilot program at the DOE. And Kalima is just a joy to work with. And Austin Branford is also leaving. He was originally assigned to bill drafting. He quickly showed his ability to analyze complex issues and was made counsel to the Housing and Buildings Committee. I worked with him on so many bills, especially around protecting children from lead poisoning. Really grateful to Kalima and Austin, who just did so much over the last many years of the council. Uh, we're really going to miss them. So on behalf of the council, I wish Celine and Kalima and Austin the best of luck. Now on to our agenda for today. Uh, the Land Use Committee will be voting on the following items. 69 Adams Street will facilitate the transfer of development rights from two city-owned lots under the Manhattan Bridge overpass to a private developer to facilitate commercial office space for a 25-story as-of-right mixed-use building. This is in Councilmember Steve Levin's district. Also in Councilmember Levin's district is 135-137 Bedford Avenue commercial overlay, which will facilitate the construction of a new five-story mixed-use building. The new Penn development one and two are HPD UDAP applications in Councilmember Inez Barron's district, and it will facilitate the construction of 10 new buildings. Moving into our legislative agenda, first we have a resolution from our committee on immigration. We're voting on resolution number 1229 from Councilmember Peter Ku in support of the Adoptee Citizenship Act of 2021 in Congress. The legislation in Congress would extend citizenship to all international adopted children upon entry into the United States, no exceptions. Councilmember Ku's resolution calls on Congress to pass and the president to sign the Adoptee Citizen Citizenship Act of 2021. And I wanna thank Elizabeth Cronk from the staff for her work on that resolution. We're also voting on three bills to help New York City tenants, especially those facing eviction proceedings. This is very timely since the eviction moratorium expires next week. Hopefully it gets extended. I think it may have gotten extended. Our first bill comes out of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, introduction number 1760A, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Levine, will establish a private right of action for the unlawful sale of data collected through a keyless entry system covered by the bill. The Department of Housing, Preservation and Development will be required to inform tenants and owners of multiple dwellings about the provisions of this law. The legislation will take effect 60 days after it becomes law, except no owner of a multiple dwelling building with an existing smart access system would be liable for a violation of any provision of this law until January 1st, 2023, in order to give those owners time to upgrade or update the existing system to bring it into compliance with this legislation. A growing number of city landlords have been replacing keys with electronic or keyless entry systems, including but not limited to key fobs, biometric identifiers, or electronic technologies, collectively known as smart access systems. These keyless systems enable access to residential buildings and certain common areas within those buildings using key fobs, biometric identifiers, or other technology in lieu of conventional mechanical keys. There are growing concerns about the privacy and protection of tenants and their guest data. This legislation will require owners of multiple dwellings that utilize smart access systems to provide tenants with a data retention and privacy policy. This bill will establish restrictions on the collection and use of data collected and establishes guidelines for removing, anonymizing, or destroying data collected the legislation additionally restricts owners from collecting data about a tenant's usage of utilities and internet services, except that such data may be shared with third parties for purposes of improving the building's energy efficiency. And from the staff, I want to thank Audrey Son for her work on that bill. Next, from the General Welfare Committee, we have two other bills from Councilmember Levine to help tenants. First, introduction number 1529 require the Office of Civil Justice Coordinator to collaborate with community groups 
and engaging and educating tenants of their rights and housing court, and then report on their efforts. Advocates and legal, legal service providers have said that tenant outreach is an area that needs substantial improvement. According to advocates, many tenants who are eligible for the Universal Access to Legal Services Program are unaware of their right to legal counsel and therefore never make it to housing court where legal counsel is provided. Uh, Vanessa Gibson also has worked on this. I wanna thank both council members Levine and Gibson for their work on this. And from the staff, I wanna thank Aminta Kilowan and the final bill by Councilmember Levine. Again, Councilmember Gibson has been involved. This bill will amend local law 136, the right to council law by requiring the immediate implementation of this historic right to council program uh, for tenants facing eviction proceedings in housing court citywide and would thereby include tenants in all zip codes across the city. And again, I wanna thank Aminta Kilowan from the staff for her work on both of those bills. Moving on from our Committee on Transportation, we have a bill to make the Open Streets Program permanent. As the weather improves, more New Yorkers are going outside and they need more public open space. I'm pleased that today we're making the Open Streets Program permanent and requiring DOT to make sure that this program reaches communities that have been underserved. It's a good example of the importance of creating bills that help all New Yorkers in implementing community feedback. Introduction number 1933, sponsored by Council Member Carlina Rivera, I am another prime sponsor of the bill, will require the Department of Transportation to operate an annual open streets program to provide additional street space to pedestrians and other non-vehicular street users. Under this program, open streets could be managed by the Department of Transportation or by community organizations. The bill would provide for notice to council members and community boards and require DOT to report on recommendations for modifications to the program. And from the staff, I wanna thank Elliot Lynn for his work on this bill. The last two bills for today come out of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor. Introduction number 888A, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos, will create a mandatory auto enrollment program deduct, payroll deduction IRA program for employees of private sector employers who do not offer a retirement plan and employ five or more employees. The plan will be portable, so when employees switch jobs, they can continue to contribute or roll over their accounts into their retirement savings plans. And from the staff, I wanna thank Nusat Chowdhury. And introduction number 901A, sponsored by council member I. Danique Miller, the chair of our Civil Service and Labor Committee, will establish a retirement savings board to facilitate the implementation of the retirement security program created by uh, Ben Kalos's bill today. The board will consist of three members who are appointed by the mayor. The board will determine the start date of the program and it will conduct education and outreach to employers and employees to make sure that we're giving the city and businesses enough time to prepare and the board would have up to two years to implement the program. Again, I wanna thank Nusa Chowdhury for their work on this bill. I really wanna uh, commend Councilmember Kalos who has worked on this for a very, very long time, uh, multiple years. And again, I wanna thank uh, the chair of the committee, uh, Councilmember Miller, who has been doing a tremendous amount of work on this. And this committee has been so busy. I wanna thank him for his leadership on this as well. With that, Madam Majority Leader, I turn it back to you. Congratulations to all of our colleagues on these important bills that we're passing today. You're on mute, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. I wanna thank you, Speaker Johnson, for that very robust legislative agenda. We'll now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in, June, in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Rivera, Kalos, and Carnegie. Rivera, Kalos, and Carnegie. So we'll begin with Council Member Rivera. Time starts now. 
Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I'm speaking here today to encourage all of my colleagues to vote yes on intro 1933A, which would codify an open streets program in New York City that I introduced with Speaker Johnson. When we first introduced legislation in the council in April of last year to launch an emergency open streets program, it was at the height of the pandemic when it was clear that we needed more space for socially distanced recreation. I think we can all acknowledge the important role that effort played in so many of our communities. If you've spent time in my district on Avenue B or in countless other places where they've implemented the program, you'll clearly see the true potential of what community led and government supported open streets can be. Ordinary New Yorkers like Sophie, who's a constituent of mine in the Lower East Side, are the reason behind the success of open streets. Sophie banded together with her neighbors to launch a volunteer program, the Low East Side of Open Streets Community Coalition, that every day sets up and takes down barriers, liaises with agencies, and organizes countless activities and events for local residents. Similar efforts were successfully launched across the boroughs in Brooklyn and in Queens, and imagine its potential with funding and proactive outreach and engagement. Through Open Streets programming, we've also been able to take it many steps further. It, enabling outdoor learning, helping local businesses thrive, inspiring entrepreneurs, allowing performing artists to share their talent and connecting us to our neighbors. But it's clear that some important changes have to be made so this becomes a permanent successful staple of our city in communities that want them. The amended legislation we're voting on today will do just that. It would require agency investments to take the load off volunteers, advancing real equity metrics and policies, expanding flexibility to customize the streets our communities deem appropriate, and it installs a process for permanent conversion to pedestrian uh -huh. plazas, shared streets, and other pedestrian-focused designs. Just a few quick thank yous. Thank you to Transportation Chair Elias Rodriguez, of course, to Speaker Johnson, Jason Goldman, Kelly Taylor, Annie Levers, Elliot Lynn, uh, Transportation Alternatives, Families for Safe Streets, The Advocates, and of course, I have to thank my team, Pedro Carrillo, Irak Chahansky, Isabel Chandler, Alexis Richards, and Jeremy Unger. I, please, I encourage everyone to please vote aye. This could be a benefit to any community that wants it, and I think it will be a raging success across the city. Thank you so much, Councilmember Rivera. Councilmember Kalos. Time starts now. New Yorkers should have a right to retire. With 4 million private sector workers in New York City, two thirds of them aren't participating in saving for retirement through their employers, in part because their employers don't have them. Nearly half of New Yorkers near retirement age have less than $10,000 saved for retirement. If we want New York City to lead the recovery, we need to make it easier to earn money, save money, and retire. Today, we are changing all of that with retirement security for all. New Yorkers over 21, working more than 20 hours a week for an employer with five or more employees who doesn't already offer retirement account would be automatically enrolled with a 5% payroll deduction. This would be at no cost to employers. It would just be another deduction like a transit check or health insurance. Retirement security for all will help 1.5 million private sector workers save for retirement. It would be low fee, it would make it easy for employees to save, and it would be portable. Gig workers, entrepreneurs, and businesses with less than five employees could join voluntarily. Also known as Secure Choice, California, Illinois, and Oregon, are already doing it. Oregon Saves is serving uh, 100,000 workers. Uh, they are now saving almost $100 million. And they are helping mainly low wage workers. I want to start with a thank you to Speaker Corey Johnson for getting this done when no one else could. To John Adler, Director of the Mayor's Office of Pensions, with whom I've been working on this since 2013, when he was at SEIU and I was spending too much time administering a 401k for a software company with Bill Samuels back then. To Labor Chair Idenick Miller for holding the first hearing on studying this issue. Then Public Advocate, now Attorney General Tish James for authoring this legislation. Mayor Bill de Blasio for elevating the right to retire in the National Dialogue. Committee on Civil Service and Labor Staff, Legislative Council, Hi. Zab Chowdhury. Policy Analyst Thomas Knapp, Finance Analyst Nevin Singh and uh, my legislative director, Paul Westrick, and my legislative council now, 
uh, who succeeded him, Wilfredo Lopez. Thank you, and I urge you all to vote in favor of this important right to retire. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. We'll now move on to Councilmember Cornegie. Time starts now. Madam Majority Leader, that was an inadvertent hand raise. I apologize. <laughs> Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? There are. The next three are Council Members Barron, Ku, and Levin. Council Member Barron, you may begin. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. First, on a personal note, I want to wish my mother-in-law a very happy 97th birthday, 97 today, and I want to wish her a happy birthday, Daisy Barron. Uh, to the bill that I want to talk about, it's uh, land use 757 and 758 and the accompanying resolutions. And it is the Penn, it's Penn Street development. It is sponsored by HPD and it is 73 units of not, as we just say, affordable housing, but I like to say housing affordable to the community where it's being built. And 10 of those units will be reserved for formerly homeless. There'll be eight units that are set aside for the heirs project for seniors and the rest of the units ranging in size from studios to three bedroom apartments will be set for the income range of 60% of the AMI down to 30% of the AMI. And the other 20% of the apartments are at 80% of the AMI. And you know, I'm always concerned that apartments and housing developments that come in at a range that are not within the range of our community. My neighborhood uh, neighborhood medium income is $37,000, $38,000. So certainly this is affordable to the range of people living in my community. And I wanna thank the speaker and his staff. I wanna thank Ms. Washington and Mr. Clay for my staff. And I wanna thank all of the land use staff who tolerate all of my calls to them and always give me the answers that I'm seeking to the questions that I pose. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Council Member Barron. We'll now go on to Council Member Ku. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I support the Open Streets Program. It provided a rare repeat from isolation during the pandemic that turned our streets into fun jobs. We should continue this program, but I must impress that not every street is suitable for this purpose. The city, uh, the city needs to remain cognizant of competing interests, and especially of traffic congestion, sanitation, and public safety and noise. Revolving traffic on tight city streets can also be more, than, more harm than good for local businesses. So I urge the DOT to carefully listen to the concerns to the of the communities where open streets are planned. We need to monitor, analyze, and troubleshoot what works and what doesn't, so that open streets don't become detrimental to those who are most affected by them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Ku. Council Member Levin. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, first, I want to uh, wish Council Member Barron's mother-in-law uh, a happy birthday. Um, I think I can speak for, for many council members and uh, council staff that we would love to meet uh, the mother of Charles Barron. Uh, uh, so I wish her a, a wonderful 97th birthday. Um, uh, I, I just want to speak very briefly about the 69 Adams Street um, uh, ULIP action. Uh, just to uh, let my colleagues know what was uh, being done here. This was a, a transfer and sale of air rights that were underneath the Manhattan Bridge. So virtually unusable air rights um, that, was that were owned by the city. Um, they, were, they will be transferred to an adjacent parcel for a purchase price um, of $17.2 million that was negotiated by EDC um, and approved by their board um, at a price of $175 a square foot for commercial density. This would be, um, this was already an as of right residential um, uh, development. Um, and this would add um, 90,000 or so commercial square feet um, to, to the development site. With that $17.2 million, 7.2 will be going back to EDC. Um, 
And the remaining $10 million will be going to $1.5 million to uh, Farragut Houses, uh, which is the local NYCHA development, um, to be decided by the residents and stakeholders there. $1.5 million to uh, PS307, which is a wonderful local elementary school to be decided by the principal, uh, uh, Stephanie Carroll, and, um, and her community. And then, um, and then uh, uh, let's uh, 5.5 plus 1.5, so $7 million to um, the York Street Station. With anyone knows uh, downtown Brooklyn knows how terrible the York Street F train is. Uh, very dangerous, one exposed. exit and entrance. This will be going towards a study of how to add a second entrance um, to uh, on the south side of the York Street F train station, um, which is used by the entire community. And so I just want to give my colleagues a, a, um, a rundown of exactly what the um, ULERP is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parliamentarian. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Levine and Miller. I just wanna remind members um, in this portion, we're only discussing issues related to what we are about to vote on. We also have opportunities for general discussion for other matters. So let's try to stay as focused as we can to what we are about to vote on and many other issues can be addressed during the vote. Um, and it can also be addressed during a general discussion. So at this time, I'll call on council member Levine followed by council member Miller. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And I am really thrilled to say words on two extremely important bills we'll be voting on today, intro 2050 and intro 1529, which are bringing urgent and desperately needed assistance to tenants in this city. We are again making history. This body is again making history for tenants. Four years after we passed landmark legislation establishing right to counsel for tenants facing eviction and housing court, sparking a national movement, and most importantly, keeping thousands of vulnerable tenants in their homes here in New York City. But this law has a five-year phase in, and still today, over half of zip codes in the city are not yet covered by the program. So intro 2050, which we're voting on today, would move for immediate implementation to every zip code, every neighborhood and all five boroughs of right to counsel for tenants in housing court ahead of what will be the expiration of the moratorium on evictions due to the pandemic. This is a huge win at a critical time. We have a second bill, intro 1529, which is designed to make sure that tenants know they have this right. Uh, this would require the city to fund outreach by community groups in impacted communities, even going door to door so that tenants know that if they are harassed or threatened by their landlord, that they'll have someone ready to defend them in court if they face an eviction. Uh, I want to thank Speaker Johnson for his incredible leadership in bringing this forward so quickly and Chair of the General Welfare Committee, Steve Levin, as well. Most importantly, I want to thank my friend, my colleague, a fellow champion for tenants' rights, Council Member Vanessa Gibson, who has been absolutely critical in this every step of the way over the last seven years. I wanna thank staff on the General Welfare Committee, Amenta Kilowan Noreen, as well as Maxwell Kampner Williams, and my own Chief of Staff, Aya Keefe, who has done incredible work on this Time over the last seven years. And, and um, Majority Leader, I will speak on intro 1760 on tenant David, data privacy when I explain my vote. Thank you so much. Thank you. Council Member Miller. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, Speaker Johnson and uh, Councilman Michaelo so greatly articulated uh, the need and the value for security, uh, for, uh, retirement security for all legislative practice that we'll be voting on today. And, and the mandate uh, auto en enrollment of private sector employees and, and exactly what it does. I, it, what, I wanna talk about 901, which, which, which creates the mechanism by which the saving program would be administered. It would create a retirement savings board to oversee the program of certain self-employed individuals, as well as employees, private, and, and private entities, and set forth the powers of the comp comptroller and the provisions of the program. 901 would allow the board to make recommendations on investments, establish a process for employees, as well as those who can opt in and out of the program. 
partner with uh, our state government entities to establish procedures to, to a certain uh, whether a, an employee is covered by the program. Uh, I, I just also want to add this legislation uh, becomes more necessary now than we've seen over the past year in pandemics. And the legislation ha had, had made a lot of headway, but had been uh, deterred by the past administration in Washington. We were steadfast. I want to thank Councilman Kalos and the team for continuing to do this. I also want to say what, what's important about this and we know that there are very uh, that, that that there were many New Yorkers that have less than ten thousand dollars in savings. But I really wanted to, to highlight that in, in in the recent studies that say that African American communities and and household wealth is diminishing. And and over the next decade, it would be a net zero if we don't do something about savings and creating wealth and opportunities now. And just just the simple dignity of retirement. Uh, we are going to be in bad shape. So I ask all of our colleagues to support this. Time message. expired. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. Okay, thank you. And thank you to all the members who have spoken at this time. We will now move into report of special committees. None. Report of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor intros 888A and 901A Retirement Savings Program. Amended and coupled in general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered resolution 1617 and 1618 Business Improvement Districts. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on General Welfare, intros 1529A and 2050A, Tenant Housing Court Rights and Legal Services. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 1760A, Tenant Data Privacy. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 752 and Reso 1620, 69 Adams Street. Coupled on general orders. LU 757 and Reso 1621 and LU 758 and Reso 1622, New Penn Development. Coupled on general orders. LU 764 and Reso 1623, 135, 137 Bedford Avenue. Coupled on general orders. LU-765, zoning for coastal flood resiliency. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU-766 in Reso 1624 through LU-769 in Reso 1627, resilient, resilient neighborhoods. Approved and laid over. Report of the Committee on Transportation, intro 1933A, Open Streets Program. Amended and coupled in general orders. And at this time, I'm asking for the clerk, take a roll call vote on all of the items that are coupled on today's general order calendar. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts Thank now. You. Thank you. While well-intentioned, uh, I don't believe that open streets should be a one-size-fits-all solution. Nor do I believe that the DOT should be the operating agency. Um, areas in Queens are a significant transportation desert and parking is at a premium in so many spaces and places. Um, uh, I, I really think that we need more green space and parks. Um, and if we're to get it right for the entire city, it has to be reevaluated and repositioned for that reason. I will be voting aye on all except intro 1933. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Bree Samuel. I'm Bree Samuel, I believe you're muted. You can come back, Mr. Clerk. Okay. Ayala. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Baron. I vote aye on all with the exception of land use 752. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. Thank you. 
Brennan. How about I on all? Brooks Powers. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Um, for bills two intro two zero five zero A and fifteen twenty nine A, um, I will need to abstain my vote on this. Um, I just wanted to highlight while I think that this is a, a good bill that helps um, renters who may not have the resources to. Um, secure legal counsel. My district is one that is very diverse, um, where we have um, homeowners, one and two family homeowners that this will place a significant, a potential significant burden on. I've heard directly from seniors in my district who are homeowners and, um, you know, with the loss of rent, month to month could end up spiraling into um, foreclosure, which Southeast Queens has been um, one of the communities that has been hardest hit in terms of foreclosures through time. And the flip side of it is I do have a part of my district where there um, are significant renters that could benefit from this. Um, I look to working with the council and trying to find ways that we can provide resources also to those one and two family homeowners as well. Um, and as far as intro 1933A, I just wanted to once again um, commend council member Rivera for her leadership on this bill, um, but just echoing my sentiments earlier um, from committee meeting and imploring the Department of Transportation to work in closely with the community and the and the council members um, to ensure that where these open streets exist, that they make sense for that particular community. Um, I do know that in parts of my district, there, there are a number of um, residents and leaders that have expressed um, an interest in having that. So thank you. Thank you. And I vote, I, um, excuse me, I vote high for all of the rest. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, council member Borelli. Okay, uh, Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. I think uh, I'll be very brief, uh, 30 seconds. I'll be voting aye on all, but in 1933A, I just want to echo what my colleagues just mentioned, uh, that I want to make sure I'm going to have a heavy expectation that the stakeholders in the community are consulted with uh, before uh, I don't, what I really don't want to see is a DLT bold bolting their ideas through a community. But with that, I'll be voting aye on all. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you. Chin. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm starting. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, congratulate all my colleagues um, on passing important legislation. And I also want to say a special thank you uh, to Kalima Johnson, um, staff on our aging committee. She's been such a tremendous help on the committee and we have done great things for our senior. And I really wanted to uh, show my appreciation to her and wish her the best. Um, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. <clears throat> Councilmember Borelli. Carnegie. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts I now. Um, I, I want to vote aye on everything that we're hearing today, but I also want to send a special congratulation to um, all of the members who are moving on to bigger and better, but a special thank you um, and congratulations to Austin Branford, who I've had this opportunity to work with um, as a member of Housing and Buildings and the Housing and Buildings Committee. He's been an absolute pleasure to work with, thorough, um, personable, all of the great things that you, you, you could want for someone to work with. Um, and, I, and I come out of that pool down on the 14th floor, so... Um, I just want to say uh, congratulations, Austin. If you ever need anything, please let me know. Thank you. I vote aye. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Thank you. Dharma Diaz. I vote aye. Ruben Diaz. Si en todo. Dinowitz. Vote aye on all. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Councilmember Eugene. We'll come back. At least. I vote aye on all. Borelli. Hi guys, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I had a family emergency and I'm picking my son up from the bus. Uh, I vote aye on all except uh, intro 888, 901A, 1529A, 1933A, and 2050A. Thank you. Thank you and I hope all is well with your son. One moment. Gennaro. Yes. Gibson. Councilmember Gibson. We'll come back. Jonai. Majority Leader, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. I just want to echo some of the uh, concerns that my colleagues brought up regarding 1933 and open streets. Uh, I commend the uh, sponsor of the bill, uh, but the way it's written, uh, DOT uh, will notify the community board of approvals and I've seen during the summer, this work contrary to the will and desires of the community where it impacted not only uh, our residential homes, which were a block away or so from a park, but it also impacted the uh, handicapped residents that lived on that street, which were not able to get out and move those cones. So I'm a bit leery and concerned. I wish this gave more enforcement and decision-making to the community board. So I'll be voting no on 1933A and I on the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Gordonchik. Permission to explain my vote, Majority Leader? Permission granted. Time starts Thank now. Thank you. I wanna join with Speaker Johnson um, in expressing my condolences to the family, the colleagues and the friends of officer Anastasio Sacos, who died this week, was killed uh, in the line of duty in my district uh, on the Long Island Expressway. Um, I have worked with uh, the people at Highway 3, which is located just off the Grand Central Parkway in Cunningham Park. I know their dedication to the safety of the people. I see them in the neighborhood um, they take their lunch in our local restaurants and his death is a tragedy, not just for our community, but for his family. And uh, I hope that they will find some peace in the days and months ahead um, as they struggle to overcome this loss. Uh, I am voting aye on all with the exception of uh, 1933. I want to associate myself with the remarks made by council members Adams and Joe Nye uh, I did not have a good experience, and I, I want to commend um, Council Member Rivera. Uh, I think that the bill is, in many parts of the city, uh, will work very well. I know it's worked exceptionally well in Councilman Drum's uh, district and in other parts of the city. My experience with it last summer, um, the city's idea was to open an open street next to uh, Cunningham Park, which I just didn't understand, and I had to work um, to stop that because it just didn't make any sense, and I'm I'm worried as, um, as my two colleagues who voted no uh, on this bill are that there aren't enough um, ways for the community to express itself. So 
while I find the goal of this bill laudable, and I again commend the sponsors for it, I uh, am going to uh, vote no. I'm sure it will pass, but I am going to vote no at this time and hope that in the future the bill will be tweaked um, to give, as Councilmember Joe and I said, um, community boards a little more discretion over this. Time expired. Thank you. With that, I vote aye and all except 1933. Thank you. Councilmember Eugene. I request permission to vote uh, on all the land use uh, colloques and all the item corporal on the today's agenda. Permission granted. I vote aye and all. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Majority Leader. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Gibson. We'll call back on Council Member Gibson towards the end of the session. Okay. Uh, Holden. Aye and all. Thank you. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote very briefly. Permission granted. Time starts now. I neglected to thank AARP for their tremendous assistance in passing this legislation. And I uh, will only vote yes on open streets on the condition that I can get more in my district and in Manhattan. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Majority Leader, may I explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I explain uh, the re the, the vote on resolution uh, 1129 later. But first, I want to thank policy analysts Elizabeth Kwong and the Council Habini Ahuha uh, and Lipster Gibson of families with children from China and all other uh, advocates for this uh, resolution. Uh, I want to especially thank Michael Marlin from AKA. Minson Kim from Museum of Korean American Heritage and all the others. Thank you. I will eye on all. Thank you. Kozlowitz. Councilmember Kozlowitz, I believe you're muted. I I know all. Thank you. Lander. Madam Majority Leader, I request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you very much. I'll be voting aye on all. I want to congratulate Council Members Kalos and Miller on this really valuable legislation to provide a path to retirement security for private sector workers in New York City. That's a real crisis where people don't have the pathway to save for retirement. And this is strong legislation. Thank you for pushing it forward. Um, and I also want to praise council members Levine and Gibson on the expansion of the right to counsel, boy, which was coming right on time long before the pandemic. Uh, evictions in New York City were already their own kind of pandemic. And thanks to your right to counsel legislation, very significant decreases, 30% in eviction came and New York City really set the trend. Um, but during the pandemic, um, it has become even worse in black and brown neighborhoods hard hit by COVID evictions are four times as likely as in other neighborhoods. So extending the city wide to provide those tenants with a path to protecting themselves and staying in their homes is so urgently necessary. Thank you for sponsoring this legislation. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levin. Aye on all. Levine. Madam Majority Leader, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts thank, now. Thank you. I want to say a word on intro 1760A, known as the Tenant Data Privacy Act. This bill is for everyone who enters their building with a key fob or a pin code or a smartphone app. Because when you go through that door with electronic access, it is generating data, a log file, which records when you enter the building. And it's, there's currently no protection of that data, nothing to prevent landlords from selling it, from using it to delve into your personal life, for using it as part of an eviction proceedings. So our bill would make New York City the first place in America to establish very strict rules around privacy protections for tenants in such buildings. 
It would prohibit landlords from ever using a tenant's building entry for purpose of eviction or harassment. It would specifically ensure that smart access sy systems are never used to collect information on the relationship status of tenants or the, and their guests. It would ensure that a landlord can't share entrance data with third parties without express permission from residents. And it would apply similar protections against misuse of utility data by landlords in buildings that track usage of heat, electricity, and Wi-Fi. I truly want to thank Speaker Johnson and Chair Carnegie for moving this legislation forward. And I want to thank the staff. This was a, a lot of work. They worked incredibly hard, long hours on this. Thank you to Audrey Som from the Housing and Buildings Committee. And thank you to my own staff, Winthrop Roosevelt and Amy Slattery. And I will be proudly voting aye on all. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Lewis. Permission takes by my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just want to share some of the sentiments that my colleague shared earlier regarding intro 1933A. I commend the bill sponsor, Council Member Rivera, for uh, pulling this bill through Open Street. It's, it's a phenomenal program. I don't think it works in every neighborhood, uh, particularly, I would say, in East Flatbush and particular areas in my district. Um, it didn't work well. So I am going to vote for it, but I hope we can find a way to give community boards more discretion and say in particular areas will, where we, it will be implemented um, within the city, particularly within my district. So I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Ampri Samuel, can we try your audio again? I vote aye on all. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. And I'd also like to add that Councilmember Gibson's audio is now working as well. Sure. Councilmember Gibson. Thank you so much. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts Thank now. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, Speaker and all my colleagues. I am very excited that today I am joining with Councilmember Mark Levine in ensuring that we, the City Council, continue to protect vulnerable tenants across the city of New York. It was just a few years ago in 2017 when we passed Intro 214, the Universal Right to Counsel legislation that was groundbreaking, transformative, and really a game changer for us in New York City. We've seen uh, evictions reduced by almost 40%. And since that time, we've seen Baltimore, San Francisco, Boulder, Philadelphia, Newark, and Cleveland all pass similar right to counsel legislation. And just this week, the state of Washington was the first state to pass right to counsel in the entire state, providing free lawyers for tenants facing eviction in housing court. Being evicted is a real fear for so many New Yorkers in many of our communities. As we slowly begin to reopen, we have to take steadfast action to pass intro 2050 and intro 1529 that would expand upon our right to counsel law and ensure that legal rep representation is provided for every eligible tenant throughout the city of New York. And we're also supporting the work of our community partners and community-based organizations in educating and engaging tenants on their rights so that people don't have to fear eviction from their homes due to their circumstances. I am so proud of this legislation. I am so proud of the city council, the Right to Council Coalition, over 80 organizations across the five boroughs. I certainly wanna thank Casa Bronx Northwest, Flatbush Tenants, Tenants United, uh, Tenants and Neighbors, Housing Court Answers, Goddard, Riverside, so many of our partners in the labor sector, and certainly my colleague and friend, my champion, Council Member Mark Levine, thank you for this journey. It has really been an honor working side by side with you and all of our um, colleagues and allies to make sure that right to counsel is a reality. I urge all of my colleagues to vote yes, support this work, and recognize that we are the ones that can provide so much opportunity for tenants and families across the city of New York. Congratulations to all my colleagues. Thank you, Council Member Rivera for your bill. And we look forward to our continued work. I vote aye on all. Thank you so much. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Council Member Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. 
Thank you. Thank you, Majority Leader. And uh, I, I want to say thank you to all the members who are uh, who are leading uh, the bill efforts today. Uh, I want to especially say thank you to Speaker Johnson for saying Francisco's name. Uh, Francisco was a delivery worker. Uh, you lifted him up as we remembered many that we lost here in the city. And uh, I'm gonna be talking about the uh, delivery worker bill that I'm, I'll be introducing with a few of my colleagues. Um, but I just wanna say thank you for, for that. It means a lot to the family. Uh, I also wanna mention that the, uh, the open streets bill, and, and, I, and I said this at the committee, but I think we should call them community streets. Uh, because they're already open right now. They're open for the multi-ton vehicles that have been used as weapons, uh, killing many of our New Yorkers on the streets. And so what, what I would love to do is really think through this with members who are voting no today, but also who are concerned about parking and other issues. I, I as a member of the Transportation Committee, I really want to understand that and, and just get a sense of it. I know in Sunset Park, we have a lot of parking issues in, in a big way. Uh, but members of the community have really embraced these streets and have brought resources. And what I just want to say thank you to the local community members who are saying yes to this. Even our restaurants that have been wanting to keep parking alive uh, have said yes. And so there's a really interesting and dynamic movement right now and evolution. And, and I'd just like to learn more uh, from you all. Okay, with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain my vote, please. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam uh, Majority Leader. Uh, with, with, with regards to intro uh, 1933, I, I just want to uh, commend um, Council Member Rivera uh, for the legislation as putting it forth, as well as uh, uh, the chair of the committee, Rodriguez, and and Councilman Renee, so who, who actually spoke so eloquently during committee on the need to have uh, the open streets, particularly in communities of color and what we witnessed in terms of the impact uh, on the COVID-19 pandemic and, and, and so forth. Um, but as in the past, I have had, as in many of my colleagues in, in, in Queens, in particular Eastern Queens, I've had a, a, uh, a problem with uh, oversight of, of uh, agencies, particularly DOT, and um, uh, based on my experiences uh, with, with with open streets and pedestrian ways, uh, I, I will be voting no. And as a uh, uh, council member, Nachaka just indicated that I, I hope to uh, work with the committee to make sure that we can address these. So myself and my Southeast Queens colleagues can support this legislation in the future. With that, I'll be voting no on. Um, 1933, as well as uh, 2050. I don't know the events. Thank you. Thank you. Moya. I will be voting I and all with the exception of 1933. Thank you. Perkins. I and all, including 1933. Powers. I and all, congrats to everyone on their bills today. Thank you. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote, Majority Leader? Permission granted. Time starts uh, now. Thank you. I, I just want to, to Council Member Miller's point, there seems to be portions of this city um, uh, where folks get more resources that are punitive to their population than they do get resources that assist um, their population. Uh, and I think that we need to have a deeper dive with the Department of Transportation about what they're doing in the outer portions of the outer boroughs to make sure that we're, we're advancing um, good policy, good transportation policy. And that's obviously not happening there. So um, I wanna be an ally to those communities that see this open streets plan um, and don't feel like they have enough input or, or um, enough investment from the Department of Transportation and for, for their community. Uh, I wanna work with you guys to, to get there. Um, but uh, of course, in my district, it's, um, it's allowed for us to expand the open space that we don't have. My district has the third least amount of park space in the city of New York. 
So for my district, we don't have an opportunity to spread out and really enjoy open air, especially during pandemics like COVID. So this definitely gave us that opportunity. So I'm extremely grateful to the work that Council Member Rivera did. I'm, pay I'm listening to my colleagues and I'm looking forward to working with them to be able to do something positive when it comes to like transportation uh, policy in their districts. And I wanna vote um, eye on all. Thank you. Riley. Congratulations on my colleagues. I'll be voting I don't know. Thank you. Rivera. Congratulations to all my colleagues on some fantastic legislation. Probably vote I on all. Thank you. Uh, Rodriguez. Rosenthal. Uh, with congratulations to the bill's sponsors, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Salamanca. Aye on all. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Council member Ulrich. We'll come back. Val sure. Valone. We'll come back again. Although we're at the end of the alphabet. <laughs> yes. Um, one moment. Van Bramer. I don't know. Thank you. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you very much. Um, Madam President, I, I agree with uh, Council Member Adams, Council Member Miller, and uh, Council Member Lewis, and so many others uh, who've spoken on intro 1933. Uh, you know, I, I like the program uh, when it's done right, uh, but I think that the bill uh, ought to and doesn't provide for a responsible adult uh, to uh, be, be running this program. Um, what we're doing is we're ceding authority to the Department of Transportation, which uh, hasn't really acted responsibly in many of these things. And there should be some mechanism for the community to be involved in this, whether it's through the community board, through the representatives in this body, uh, through a committee made up of the representatives in the legislature and the city council who represent the particular area to at least opine before the Department of Transportation comes down and decides which street yes, which street no. And for that reason, I will vote no on intro 1933. Uh, with respect to introduction 888, um, again, this is, you know, as I frequently find um, here, sometimes we are uh, passing legislation which are solutions in search of problems. It is no question that there are people who are not uh, uh, with the retirement accounts that we are blessed with. Um, there's no question about it, but this bill doesn't provide retirement accounts. What it provides is a regulatory scheme for employers to manage something that they've never had to do before. It doesn't provide a single penny to the employees and employees can simply walk down the bank, the block to any bank and open up an IRA. This doesn't help them in any way except for institute a mandatory uh, scheme of uh, regulation over very small employers, not 25 or more, not 50 or more, but anybody who has six employees. The small fruit store um, will have to do this kind of uh, massive bookkeeping uh, and regulation. And again, reminding as I frequently do, I know my time is up, uh, but I will be quick, that the first violation um. or uh, for an employer who doesn't have his paper clips in order on the papers that he's required to keep for three years is $250. The second violation is $500. And it seems to me that we can do a little better. And I will also point out, I'm wrapping up, that the city uh, has inoculated itself in this legislation that all the city has to do to end this program is certify that the city might be liable. And if the city certifies that it's liable, the program ends. 
employers don't get to certify, employers don't get to remove themselves from liability in any way. So for that reason, I will be voting no on introductions 888 and 901 as well, and I on the remainders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Yeager. I think I've seen Council Member Van Bramer. Council Member Van Bramer. Council Member Van Bramer already voted. Okay, I apologize. Council Member, uh, excuse me, Ulrich. Hi, good afternoon. I vote aye on all. I'm sorry for the delay and the background noise. I'm under the J train on Jamaica Avenue. So I vote aye on all. Thank you so much, Council Member Ulrich. Thank you. Thank you. We'll try it. Council Member Vallone. Vallone. I Aye on all, if you can hear me. Yes. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Matteo. Thank you. I'm voting no on 888, 901, 1529, 2050, and 1933, and I and the rest. Thank you. Uh, Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. Just give us a moment while we tally the results. Okay, thank you for your patience. All items on today's general order calendar have a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exceptions of the following. Introduction 1933A has 39 in the affirmative, eight in the negative, no abstentions. Land use item 752 and resolution 1610 have 46 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 2050A has 43 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and one abstention. Introduction 1529 has 44 in the affirmative, two in the negative, one abstention. Introduction 901A has 44 in the affirmative, three in the negative, no abstentions. And introduction 888A is also 44 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and no abstentions. And there are no land use calls. Okay, thank you. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We'll now move into discussion of resolutions. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak on today's resolutions? Council Member Ku and Council Member Levin. Council Members Ku and Council Member? Levin. Levin, okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm speaking on general discussion. General discussion, not, not a resolution. Okay. Council Member Minchaka, do you wish to speak on discussion of resolutions or general discussion? On the resolution. Council Member Ku, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Today we are voting on my resolution 1129 that calls on the United States Congress to pass and the President to sign the Adopted Citizenship Act of 2021 in order to secure US, uh, U.S. citizenship of internationally adopted children who are now 
uh, adults or aging into adulthood. This resolution calls on the federal government to close a loophole in the child citizenship act of 2000, which prevents internationally adopted children from receiving US citizenship despite being legally adopted by US citizens. Imagine spending 99% of your time uh, as American only to have your country turn its back on you because of missing paperwork. The Child Citizenship Act of 2000 was supposed to allow fallen born children of US citizens to acquire citizenship. Unfortunately, a loophole in the act left out thousands of adoptees from countries all over the world because they were 18 years old by the time the law were, uh, went into effect. Thousands of international adoptees have spent nearly their entire lives in America without citizenship rights. And many actually have no idea they are not really citizens. Such an oversight in, is a colossal failure of our federal immigration policy. It should be prioritized as an urgent bipartisan fix because there's absolutely no reason why international adoptees should not be granted full and unequivocal citizenship. We have spent too long demonizing immigrants Time in expired. this country. These are our family members, our friends, and our neighbors. It is time that we treat them with the basic human dignity that they deserve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, major and thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Peter Ku, Councilmember Ku. Are there any other members who wish to speak on today's resolution? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Councilmember Menchaca, followed by the speaker. Time starts now. Councilmember Menchaca, you may begin. Thank you, Majority Leader. And uh, I just want to echo the powerful words of Councilmember Ku, uh, member of the Immigration Committee. We just voted on this earlier today, and I want to add some words. The right to citizenship is powerful. It grants the privilege of voting and running for office, but it also provides permanent protection from deportation and the freedom to travel within and outside the United States. Citizenship allows individuals full access to this nation's safety net. Its benefits without fear of adverse immigration consequences. The current adoption loophole in immigration law is cruel. You can be brought to the US as a child only to find out later that you are not guaranteed the rights of citizenship. Federal law must be updated and immediately so that we can ensure that everyone gets access to these incredible um, uh, life-changing opportunities. I wanna thank Council Member Ku for bringing uh, this up and all the members who are gonna be voting on it today in support. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Manchaka. And I see, are there any other members who wish to speak, Mr. Parliamentarian? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Speaker Johnson followed by Council Member Rodriguez. Speaker Johnson, and then we'll begin with uh, Council Member Rodriguez. Speaker Johnson, you may begin. I wanna thank Council Member Ku for this really, really important resolution today. I just wanna say personally, uh, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for my biological father being adopted from Seoul, South Korea as a small child from an orphanage by an American couple. Uh, my grandparents adopted my father and another Korean boy uh, who he was not related to. And they were brought to the United States as small children. Uh, so this is really important. And I wanna thank Councilman Machaka for those uh, really, really powerful words uh, about what this means. Uh, and for the important work the Immigration Committee is doing. I look forward to voting in favor of this resolution today. Thank you so much. Councilmember Rodriguez. Time starts yeah. now. Yes, Majority Leader, I would like to ask unanimous consent to vote and at the same time to thank the speaker for the opportunity that he gave uh, Councilmember Kalina Rivera and I to pass this bill today. This bill is very important to improve safety, not only for the right is to use the bus, but also to be able to make the bus more accessible to the same community. Uh, uh, is there unanimous consent? Is there any objection 
uh, to granting unanimous consent for Councilman Rodriguez to vote on all the items on today's uh, calendar. I see no objections, Madam Majority Leader. You may vote, Councilmember Rodriguez. I vote aye. And at this time, we will wait for a new tally before I begin to read the resolution onto the record. Revised vote on all items of today's general order calendar now have a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of the following. Introduction 1933A has 40 in the affirmative, eight in the negative, zero abstentions. Land use 752 with resolution 1610 has 47 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 2050A has 44 in the affirmative, three in the negative, one abstention. Introduction 1529A with 45 in the affirmative, two in the negative, one abstention. Introduction 901A with 45 in the affirmative, three in the negative, no abstentions. And finally, introduction 888A with 45 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have a voice vote on today's resolution. And excuse me one moment, are there any other members who wish to speak on today's resolution? No, Madam Majority Leader. Just wanted to be clear. Thank you. We will now move into a vo voice vote on today's resolution. If you wish to vote against or abstain from today's resolution, please notify the Legislative Documents Unit by mail. I'll now read today's resolution onto the record. Resolution 1229 calls on the United States Congress to pass and the President to sign the Adoptee Citizenship Act of 2021, H.R. 1593, and S-967 in order to secure U.S. citizenship of internationally adopted children who are now adults or aging into adulthood. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to sign up to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Brannon, Barron, and Menchaca. Council member Brannon, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, I'm proud to represent uh, Pequena Gate in Bensonhurst, which is actually home to many of New York City's food uh, delivery workers. And when you order from Grubhub or DoorDash or Postmates, these are the people who deliver your food. They don't get paid much, they don't get benefits, and they often work in dangerous conditions. Uh, the third party delivery food world is a multi-billion dollar industry. And these massively public traded companies have been profiting off the backs and the bicycles of these mainly immigrant workers uh, for a long time, especially over the past year when all we really could do was order takeout. So my colleagues and I are introducing a, a package of bills uh, to help deliver a little bit of dignity and respect to these workers. Um, two of the bills I'm uh, introducing, uh, one would require uh, these delivery app businesses to provide um, the bicycle, uh, the workers with insulated food delivery bags. And the other bill would simply allow a worker to decide uh, if he didn't want to go deliver something to the Bronx if he was currently in Queens. Um, so I, I hope that uh, my colleagues will sign on to these bills, and I'm sure my, my other colleagues will speak on, on their bills as part of this package as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Council Member Barron. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to briefly wish all those who are leaving the very best in the new ventures, but I particularly want to extend best wishes to Kalima Johnson, 
who was a policy analyst for the Education Committee. She worked feverishly, dedicated, and unselfishly in terms of asking questions that I had, in terms of making sure that those issues were included that I felt were important in the Education Committee. And I wish her well. We've developed a personal friendship as well beyond the City Council. And we just love her talents, her personality, her perseverance, and her professionalism. So I wish all of them well, but particularly to Kalima, the best in your new undertaking. Thank you. Thank you so much. Council Member Menchaca. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Last week, over a thousand food delivery workers marched in Manhattan demanding dignity and safety for their essential work. It was one of the largest labor demonstrations in the city's history, yet few in the media and government took note. That neglect only proves their point that the city is happy to praise their essential workers, even while it does nothing to protect them, the deliveristas. The deliveristas kept us fed and alive during the pandemic, and they risked their health and safety to keep the economy going. Without them, restaurants and businesses across the entire city could never have made that pivot onto online. But as demands increased, protections for their labor did not keep up, and so deliveristas are not being paid on time or at all. They are forced to pay for their own equipment and bags. When the deliveries fail, they are penalized and often suspended, even if the fault was not their own or the fault of the restaurant or the customer. For a mostly immigrant labor force, such suspensions not only add insult to injury, but endanger entire families and communities. And during our cold winter, restaurants did not even grant deliveristas the basic decency of using their bathrooms. This is happening because delivery app companies care more about keeping customers and restaurants happy than they do workers who are keeping the whole thing moving. But today is an historic day. And we here in the city council, council member Rivera and Brannon and speaker Johnson are supporting this really historic uh, opportunity for our neighbors. I am proud to introduce and part of this package uh, with all of them and including Brad Lander and Margaret Chin, who are, have also been champions for our delivery workers. This is the first step, but there's a lot more work and I can't wait to keep doing this work with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Menchaca. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Levin, Ku, and Drum. Council Members, say that once more. Levin, mm -hmm. Ku, Mm -hmm. and drum. Okay. Councilmember Levin, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you very much, um, Madam Majority Leader. First, um, I want to extend uh, my condolences to the family of uh, Police Officer Anastasios Tsakos, um, who was killed um, in Queens by a um, drunk driver um, in recent days. My, my condolences to his, to his family. Um, uh, secondly, I, I want to actually call my colleagues' attention to an article that just came out, um, I believe, yesterday um, in the New Yorker by Saki Nafo, um, and highlighting our colleague, Alika Ampre Samuel, and her um, steadfast work in bringing community based public safety to her district in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Um, this article uh, details. Um, significant shortcomings in, in the NYPD and, um, and is, is, uh, is revelatory uh, for me to read. And I, I really strongly encourage uh, all of my uh, colleagues uh, to read it and, and, um, and read it uh, with a critical eye um, and what we can do in the remaining months of this term um, to bring transparency and, and, and real reform um, to the NYPD. And, and so I just want to uh, commend um, our colleague, Alika Ampre Samuel, for her steadfast work. Thanks. Thank you so much, Council Member. We'll now go to Council Member Ku. Time starts now. Thank you. Today I'm introducing Resolution 1619, calling on the US Congress to pass and the President to sign the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act, which is federal legislation 
that will expedite review of COVID-19 hate crimes. As we know, the pandemic has exacerbated hate crimes and biased incidents in Asian Americans here in New York City and around the country. At the time of this drafting, New York City has seen 35 hate crimes reported. That number has already skyrocketed to 68 in just a month. And these are just those that have been reported and confirmed. One of the largest dangers to our community at this point is unreported hate crimes and bias incidents. It has been difficult to gain the public's trust due to a history of inaction. And therefore many times these crimes never get reported. The COVID-19 hate crime act will accomplish three key goals. One, designate an officer of the Justice Department to conduct expedited, expedited reviews of hate crimes. Second, issue guidance for state and local law enforcement agencies for reporting in multiple languages. Third, issue guidance de describing best practices to mitigate racially discriminatory language in describing the COVID-19 pandemic. We need federal action, especially in areas where there are not many, uh, where there may not be large Asian populations and law enforcement may not have the linguistic or cultural competence Time. to address these incidents when they occur so that they don't explain them away as someone just having a bad day. And we need to stop allowing people in power to use discriminatory language like China virus or Kung Fu. These are not partisan words and this is not a partisan issue. This affects all of us. Our country is better than this. I hope you will join Council Member Chin and I in supporting this, uh, this legislation. Thank you. Thank you so much for your very timely words. Uh, Council Member Drum. I'm starting. Thank you. thank you very much, um, Madam Majority Leader. I also just want to uh, thank Kalima Johnson, who's leading. Kalima came on board when I was education chair, and it was a real pleasure to be able to work with her. She's a thorough professional. She's kind, she's nice, she's competent, and I just wish her all the best. And I uh, just want to say thank you, Kalima, for everything we, that you did for students in New York City. So thank you and good luck. I, I hope to see you soon and let's stay in touch. Thank you, Kalima. Thank you, Councilmember Drum. Any other members at this time who wish to speak? No, Madam speak. Majority Leader. Seeing none, I'll now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, again, I want to thank Kalima Johnson and Austin Branford and Celine Misrahi. We're going to miss them. The stated meeting of April 29th, 2021 is hereby adjourned. Everyone be safe. Thanks.